Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous videos, we derived the general second order differential equation for a source free RCL circuit, a circuit that contains a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. We had some initial condition where we had an initial current in the circuit, an initial voltage across the capacitor because we had an initial amount of charge in the capacitor driving the start of the circuit, and we, had, we found the initial condition for the change in the current with respect to time when time is equal to zero in terms of the inductance, the initial voltage, the resistance, and the initial current. We assumed that we're going to have a situation right here where the current would oscillate but diminish over time because we had a damping factor caused by the resistance and the interaction between the resistance and the inductor. So when we then set up a general solution to the equation where the current as a function of time is equal to the amplitude of the current times e to the st, we then had to solve for s by solving the differential equation. We, we found a way in which we can then solve for s as a quadratic equation where s was equal to minus r over 2l plus or minus the square root of r over 2l quantity squared minus 1 over lc. If we now make the substitution where alpha is represented by r over 2l and omega sub naught is represented by the square root of 1 over lc, then this solution to differential equation now looks like this, where s is now equal to minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. Now the alpha is the damping factor. Notice that alpha is r divided by 2l, the resistance divided by twice the inductance. The bigger the resistor, the bigger alpha, the greater the damping factor, the quicker the oscillation will slow down because the resistor is what takes energy out of the system, and the bigger the resistor, the faster the energy will, take, will come out of the system. The bigger L, of course, makes for a smaller alpha because the bigger the, the, bigger the um, inductor, the smaller the current through the circuit, the less the resistor will take energy out of the system because the energy of the, across the resistor or taken away from the circuit by the resistor is I square R. And if I is smaller because you have a bigger inductor, alpha will be smaller. The second one, omega sub naught, is called the natural frequency of the system. If there was no damping at all, omega sub naught would simply be 1 over LC, which means energy would just freely go back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor, the inductor and the capacitor forever, if there was no resistor, and so that would be the natural frequency of the system without a resistor in the circuit. Now, if alpha is larger than omega sub naught, if the damping factor is bigger than omega sub naught, then we have what we call overdamping. Very quickly will the damping go to zero. If alpha is equal to omega, we have what we call critical damping, then it will take a little bit longer before we come to a stop. And finally, alpha is smaller than omega means we're underdamped and then you have a situation that looks a lot more like this. So this would be the situation where alpha, the damping factor, is smaller than omega, the natural frequency. And then we have a bunch of oscillations before it slowly comes to a stop. Notice again that s is the is the variable in front of the time in the exponent and that will determine then how quickly the oscillations come to a stop in a source-free RCL circuit. Now we're going to explore this concept a little bit more in the videos to come, but at least now we have a good idea. And I just noticed I'm missing an E here. There we go. <laughs> um, so, but in the future we'll go ahead and explain a little bit more what that all means and we'll show the three different kinds of solutions in terms of the general equation. And that is how it's done.